Okay, let's try this again without the snow. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbing. What are we doing today? We are dewinterizing. And why are we doing it? Because it's a gorgeous 60 degree day here in Vermont. It's yes. very unusual for April. As you can see, I got my short pants on and- Short sleeves for me. We are getting ready to head out of here and now is the time to do winterize. So it's a really simple process, but I'm gonna show you three things that I bet you don't do when you dewinterize your RV or your Airstream. So if you want to, definitely click below to subscribe and check out this episode for how we dewinterize plus three tips that I bet you don't do. Stay tuned. What are you doing right now? I am dewinterizing. So we have flushed our tanks. We have um, filled it up initially about half full. Then we ran all of the uh, fluid, anti -free, uh, potable antifreeze uh, out of the system. We have now added a full tank of water with a bleach solution of one cup, which will allow for a two hour saturation period as per the uh, Centers for Disease Control. I'm tightening up the water heater because I do also sanitize the water heater. So I'm tightening up the nut that was loose over the weekend. I'll turn the bypass valves, fill up the tank, and I will run all of this solution through the faucets up until I smell chlorine, chlorinated water, and then we'll let that sit for two hours. That's a good idea. And everything pressurized, right? After the long winter? Best feeling in the world after a long Vermont winter when it's in the negative teens is when you pressurize your water system and you know you don't have any cracks or leaks. Awesome. Okay, so all of our solutions have sat for well over an hour, probably pushing two hours. So what we're gonna do is the first thing is we're gonna drain our hot water tank of the chlorinated solution. We'll first of all put the pressure relief valve because it is under pressure because we did pressurize it. And we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew it. Let it drain. Now that the hot water tank is drained, we're gonna use this device, which I attach to my filter, which will do two things. First, it'll ensure that I clean all the chlorinated water out of the hot water tank. And second, it will remove any deposits. As you can see, it's got like a little that's not the wand of nastiness, is it? No, that's not the wand of nastiness. The <laughs> wand of nastiness is what we insert into the toilet to uh, flush out the black water tank at the end of the season. The wand of nastiness would never, ever come into contact with our fresh water system. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to shove it into the hole, and then we're going to begin flushing repeatedly. We'll just do this a whole bunch of times until we feel that it's completely washed out. We'll make sure that all the, any chlorinated water is off of my stainless steel. And the hot water tank will be ready to go for refilling once I clean out all the chlorinated water out of the fresh water tank. We'll go ahead and load the hot water, fresh water, flush everything through the faucets until I can't smell anything. And then we're gonna go ahead and test that water and make sure we've done a good job. What are you doing right now? Right now, well, one, here's a pro tip for everyone. Every, everybody should sanitize their fresh water system at least once or twice a year, but few people actually sanitize their jerry cans, which I'm doing right now, and our fresh water hoses, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Excellent. To sanitize our fresh water hoses, I'll take solution from the jerry can with the chlorine in it, and I'll use this cool little funnel to add the chlorinated water to the hose. I'll fill up the hose and then I'll secure the two ends of the hose together and let that sit for the two hour period to ensure sanitization. I'll then use these hoses to flush out the system to make sure that there's no chlorine left in the hoses.
back inside and there's one more step to make sure that everything is properly sanitized and I've got my fresh water container with all of my fittings. And at the beginning of the season, I'll take things like my L connector, my pressure, you can measure. this all in like good offside hands, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Pressure reducer. We'll take all of our other fittings. Uh, Maybe you should have gotten a bigger pot. Well, it's a pot I use every year. All of our other little caps and connectors. Now, how long do you boil these things for? At least five minutes. See, we're going to boil those for five minutes, make sure that there's no contamination on any of our fittings, and then we're going to move on to some water testing. We're back in the house now, and we have completed the derinerization. And the sanitation. And the sanitation, exactly. So one of the things that we do after we do that to confirm the effectiveness of the sanitation and the maintenance of our fresh water system is we always take a sample from the Airstream and we conduct some testing on it, which is really super easy and super cheap to do. We do a total dissolved solids test, um, which you can buy this meter from Amazon for between $9.99 and $21.99, depending upon the features you want, and a pH meter um, to test the acidity or basicity of the water and we drink from our tap from our airstream every a lot of people say well oh, we don't drink from our our tank because it tastes bad or they don't trust it i think it's fine it's great we love it but then again why is that we've maintained it we bought it new we've maintained it fastidiously so we're going to go ahead and do those tests for total dissolved solids this is going to show you organic and inorganic solids that are dissolved um, in the water the EPA has a limit of uh, TDS of 500 milligrams per liter. Below 300 is considered good drinking water. But above 500 is not drinkable, right? No, above 500 is drinkable. That's just the EPA standard that they oh. set. Anything over 1,000 is defined as unhealthy, and you shouldn't even oh, okay. touch that kind of stuff. Definitely, I'm not a scientist. Well, no, I am a scientist. Kind of engineer so, scientist but I'm not a water expert so do your own research but um, we're gonna go ahead and do the testing here and see what we got and I'll occasionally even take like a campground like if the water coming out of the campground is looking funky I'll go ahead and take a sample of this look at total dissolved solids before hooking it up to my camper and polluting my entire system so let's just take a look at the spring water what we see what here. we got and this is just a bottle of spring water that you get at the store, right? Yep. So 122 milligrams per liter for the spring water. And that's the solids? Yep. Total okay. dissolved solids. Okay. And like I say, it doesn't tell you what is in there. You have to buy a separate kit for that. And that's kind of fun too. Have we have you done yeah. that? Of course yeah. we've done that. <laughs> um, but we don't do it every year. Let's go ahead and take a look at the town water from our tap and it's and our town water is fairly nice it comes from a nice little spring but they of course treat it as well 208 milligrams per liter and this is Vermont spring water from the but is that surprising to you that it's higher no because they've added like what chlorine and uh, exactly whatever else well, we're the large major she kind of knows her stuff yep they've added something something else other chlorine stuff. fluorine things like that to fluoride maybe don't yeah. they do that for teeth? Yeah. Okay. It's a big controversy here, but they do. Something like that. All right, so let's check out our airstream. See what our, this is right from the faucet. Now, now it's important it. to know that this has passed through the, this water here. So it's from our tap. It's our tap water. But it's gone through our water filter. Yes. Into the airstream. So this number might be lower than here because we've taken some of those solids out with the filter. through our water filter. We use okay. one of those blue water filters that I believe I've shown in other videos. Oh, went off. So let's go ahead and check out what we got here. 45. 45? Wow. That's even better than the spring water. Yep. <clears throat> so, 
Let's just do a quick pH measurement to make sure we're not too acidic or basic. The spring water is at... One would think that that would be the same across the board, right? Should be pretty close, yeah. Spring water is at 6.9. The town water is at 6.8. And the Airstream is at 7.0. That's interesting. I wonder if the, uh, the bleach may have done something acidic. Uh, it could have affected, but anything between six and a half and eight and a half um, is considered acceptable for a pH. So we're well within that range. Yeah, looks like um, our numbers are pretty good. I was actually very surprised at how low the uh, Airstream one was. And, and I bet that, that slightly uptick might be due to just a little bit of residual bleach left. So um, that's kind of our water testing. If uh, you like our video, our dewinterization, de definitely... Subscribe or comment below and give us a thumbs up because that always helps our channel. And if you want to comment and make fun of like what a paranoid, freakazoid person I am, I consider that a mark of pride. And how if, I maintain my airstream. And if you've ever bought a testing kit and tested your own water, just out of curiosity, comment below and tell us what you found out. So, cheers. Till next week, cheers. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's perfect.